Hey everyone, I'm Cryptic Fox, and today we're looking at power management in Oxygen Not Included. In the early stages of the game, your power needs are relatively simple. Generally, you'll be using the manual generator to only power a couple of simple things. Maybe you're using something to, to produce oxygen, like an algae deoxidizer. You might have started some research with your research station. You have a small battery maybe you're powering up. You maybe even added a couple of other items, like your micro musher or a supercomputer, to your system. These few items don't have a high demand for power, so you're not really generally, generally producing a whole lot, and there's not a lot to worry about managing there. As your colony grows, your power needs will grow with it. You'll start to use other mechanisms to produce power outside of that manual generator, and you'll have more machines to try to be powering with it. For example, you might have something like a farm operation growing where you're, ha you're having to control temperatures and producing power and working, working liquid pumps. Air scrubbers to try to control the, little, the amount of CO2 that you have. Micro mushers for food. Electrolyzers to produce oxygen. There's, your power needs grow and grow as your colony gets larger. The manual generator is your, more, your most basic means of generating power. And you're basically trading duplicate time in order to produce energy that you can use to power your systems. This can be an, an easy way to start off your base initially because you don't have high power needs, but this generator only produces 400 watts of power. And even though you can use this, this generator right from the early game to right through the late game, you're constantly trading your duplicates time on the generator in order to run it. If you have lots of duplicates, that's not really a big issue, but if you're controlling the size of your colony and the number of duplicates you might have, sometimes giving up those resources in order to run the manual generator can be a challenge. That's where these other generator methods come into play. You have the coal generator, the hydrogen generator, and the natural gas generator. The coal generator, as the name implies, runs off of coal, which you have to harvest. You have either the means of getting that specifically out of the environment by harvesting it, or you can feed a hatch, and the hatches will poop out, car uh, will poop out coal that you can then collect and use in your generator as well. This generator produces 600 watts of power, but it also produces carbon dioxide and heat, so more often than not, you're going to want to try to contain this coal generator in a, uh, in a cold biome environment. The hydrogen generator produces 800 watts of power, but requires hydrogen to run. You can obtain hydrogen from your electrolyzers. If you've seen the, the video that I did on producing oxygen using electrolyzers, we're using the hydrogen from that process. But there's also hydrogen that's available in certain pockets of the environment, but it's very hard to, to harvest and work with. Getting a stable supply of hydrogen to run a generator can be a bit of a challenge. Uh, so this is not generally one of the most power efficient one of the most efficient methods of generating power in your colony. And your last option is natural gas, which produces 800 watts of power as well. And if you find a natural gas geyser, it can be used much more uh, consistently to produce power. You tend to march through these items as you as you work your way through the game. You'll start off with your manual generator. Expand your coal generator. You might have, you might then start to bring in your hydrogen generator as you're trying to destroy some of the hydrogen you're working with. And then if you find, uh, if you find it and you have a, a natural gas geyser, you can use your natural gas generator. Natural gas also is available uh, if you're producing uh, fertilizer from the, the fertilizer maker. However, uh, that mechanism is a little bit more challenging to work with, uh, and you have to continuously pump energy into that particular system in order to extract energy out. To move electricity throughout your base, you have two basic wires that you can use. You have your electrical wire, which is this smaller, simple wire that you can run throughout your base. This wire will carry a load of up to 1,000 watts of power, or 1 kilowatt, before it starts to come under strain. This wire has a negative 4.5 decor effect, but it's only one, a one tile radius. So if we look at our decor in here, you can see that this one is not really a strong effect. Uh, and it, you can also place it directly inside of walls and floors and through other objects so that you can kind of conceal that uh, that negative decor effect within that space. And when this is running through the floor, it doesn't radiate any negative decor outward. And really the decor is only on the, the one block that the line runs through itself. When looking at how much power is being drawn from a line, you have to look at the, the items that are specifically attached to it, and that will give you an idea of how much energy they're trying to draw. So you have both the power that you're supplying into the line and the amount of energy that's being drawn out of it. You can produce an infinite amount of power into your line, but if you're drawing more than a thousand watts of power out of the line, then it becomes an issue and the wire itself will start to break. So in this case here, you can see that we have, uh, we have a switch and then we have four different machines that are attached to it for a total of 720 watts in this one particular mechanism. In this case, I'm not stressing this particular wire, but if we were to add any other machines onto this that would push it past a thousand watts, now we're drawing too much power out of this little wire. 
And that could prove to be a challenge because you might have some other things out there like your micro musher, your algae deoxidizers. You might have some pumps and some scrubbers on there, all of which are going to try to draw power. If your power is all connected as one individual grid, it's going to overload. When your power lines overload, you'll see that the wire will actually become damaged. It'll become, it'll turn red. You'll get the small little, uh, small little, I don't know, this little damage meter that will work its way down. And when it gets down to zero, you'll get this little broken wire symbol. No power will pass through that wire until it's been repaired, which consumes resources and time for the duplicates to go and fix it. In order to avoid this, you have to try to manage your power more effectively and distribute it through your, throughout your base using wires instead that are capable of holding a higher load. This is where the heavy watt wire comes into play. Your heavy watt wire is capable of carrying up to 20 kilowatts or 20,000 watts, which is significantly more than your individual wires can carry. What this gives you the opportunity to do is to create a power a power supply system that lets you concentrate your, your power generation in a given area and connect these up through a single heavy watt wire to distribute the power throughout the base. And the challenge with these wires is that they also have a very strong negative decor effect, minus 22.5 decor, and it radiates for six tiles. So out here, for example, you can see the, the scope of that effect. This area up here is not really being affected by the decor, and it's the top of that six tile area. So the radius of the, the negative decor effect is quite significant. Because of this negative decor effect, you can't really run heavy watt wire throughout your entire base because you would have that, that negative effect throughout your whole base impacting all of your duplicates. These wires similarly can't be run through floors or walls, and therefore you can't negate that, that negative decor effect. You can, however, pass these wires through a door. As you can see in this colony, I have a heavy watt wire that passes through this double door in order to distribute to a different area of the colony, and it doesn't have any issues. The challenge with it is that you have to build these in a specific order. So if we take our mechanized airlock, for example, we can place it on top of an existing heavy watt wire. For demonstration purposes, I broke this heavy watt wire and built a door in, in the gap that, here that you can see. The challenge that I hear now is that you have to place these in a specific order. So while you can place a door on top of a wire, you cannot run a wire through a door. You immediately get that red symbol. And as you can see, when we switch to the power scenario here, even though on these doors it's actually passed through because the door was built on top of it, in this scenario, the wire technically looks like it's connected. However, it's not making that connection through the door. You can see that it stops just short of the door on either side. In order to build this, you first have to build the wire through and then place the door down on top. That's your first way of getting the, these heavy watt wires around your base. Even though you can get through the doors, it's not, it's not really going to be a positive decor effect for you to run these large wires so that your base can you can't conceal them. The nice thing here though is that these heavy watt wires don't radiate their negative decor effect through walls, doors, or through the ground. And that means that you can use those as a way of kind of shielding the wire by running it through its own little conduit in the areas of your base. You just have to be a little more thoughtful about how you're going to plan that arrangement. In this particular colony I chose to run the, the heavy watt wire through the, through the top portion of my colony and then this wire extends out into other areas where I can then make use of it. If you have a heavy watt wire that you need to pass through a wall or a floor for some reason, there's really only one way to do that short of breaking the floor itself or passing it through a door. In your power menu, you'll find the wire bridge. And this is just simply something that, that connects two different wires together and bridges them over a space. The wire bridge allows you to bridge the wire between two different places. So in order to move through a floor or a ceiling, for example, you hit the letter O to rotate your wire bridge, and you can see how it's connected to the wire. In this case, you can just pass it right through the floor in, in this manner. When the duplicates come and build it, they'll have a little bridge that passes through here, and you can continue your wire on the other side. Similarly, if you want to pass it through a wall, you do the same thing. You would just simply have it stay horizontally, connect the high-watt wire to one end of the wire bridge, and then again on the other side of the wire bridge on the other side of the wall. These wire bridges can also be used to pass through a door, although it's not really necessary. If the door is already in place and you don't want to have to break it, you can use the wire bridge to pass through that door. However, if the wire is already in place and you're placing the door down, you can't place it directly on top of the wire, so there's not really any specific reason to use the bridge, unless that's an area where you need to pass through a pre-existing door. There is a known bug right now where if you're using this wire bridge to pass, to pass over another heavy watt wire, so maybe you're trying to maintain separate grids and pass the bridge over top of the wire, this can cause it to, to short out because it doesn't recognize properly the, the lack of connection that's made by the bridge passing over top of it. This bug may have already been resolved by the time you, you see this, this tutorial. However, if you're seeing this close to the time of publication, know that that is a bug that exists currently. So if you're trying to pass one heavy watt wire over top of another without them connecting, through the use of the wire bridge, you may still overload your circuit. When you want to send the power from the heavy watt wire into an area of your base that you want to use the smaller wires for, 
that's where the power transformer comes into comes into play. The power transformer allows you to convert the energy that's in that heavy watt wire down into a smaller amount so that you can run it through an individual wire up to a thousand watts. This power transformer allows the flow of energy only in a single direction, and you can see it marked. You can see it marked by the arrows that are located on the side of your transformer. So you want your heavy watt wire feeding into the top portion of your of your transformer, and you want your smaller wire or the regular electrical wire flowing out of the connection at the lower part. Once you've made that that connection, you can then run this wire down through your base and through the walls and use it to, to supply power into the different areas of your base. So in this case here, you can see I have the heavy watt wire, even though I've broken the connection here. I have the heavy wire, wire here running through the transformer to then provide me with power up to a maximum of 1,000 watts running through this wire. 720 of those watts are being used up in this this power supply area, up in the, or sorry, in the oxygen supply room that I have located at the top here with access for a little bit more power to go down here for to spend power at up to 240 watts in the musher, in the micro musher, and then also feeding into some batteries and things as well so we can we can store up portions of it. This isn't necessarily the most efficient layout for your, uh, for your electricity, but it is one way that you can go about doing it and trying to, to separate it. Because I have in the top portion of my colony here a whole area that I haven't been too worried about the decor in particular, I'm, I haven't been worried about running the, the heavy watt wire through it because the negative decor effect is negligible when there's no uh, no duplicates running up there, short of when I give them specific tasks that should take them in that place. The best time to start thinking about your power supply needs though is when your colony is still this small. Even though you're only going to be running a manual generator at this point, you know at some point in the future you're going to need that larger supply of energy. If you have a cold biome that's located nearby the core portion of your colony, this is the best place to build most of your power generation needs. Short of things like uh, specifically the uh, the gas power generator, because you might you're going to need to locate that generally where the natural gas is located. But specifically for your coal power generator, and then also if you have the opportunity for your hydrogen generator, you can place them here, and then channel all of your power through that single backbone wire that supports your entire colony. One of the ways you might manage the power distribution in your colony is to locate your power generating machines out in the cold biome where you can manage the temperatures effectively, and then use the heavy watt wires in order to transport the energy that you've built in that given area over to another space. You can also supply a bunch of different batteries here to handle the overflow, because most of the time you'll find your power generating machines are going to be producing more energy than is needed by your, any given machine that's running in your colony, so you want to store some of that overflow, and that can also be useful in, uh, in the cold biome. As you can see, I have all these batteries and these machines all connected to the heavy watt wire. The heavy watt wire I then have running through a channel that goes vertically up and down the layers of my colony. At each of the layers, when I want to break off the energy, I have a power transformer set up here that will convert it from the heavy watt wire to the regular electrical wire that I can then run through the floor. This lets me control the negative decor impact while also having a lot of control over the amount of energy that's being supplied to any given circuit. What I basically then just do is control the different machines that are located on any given floor. So in this case, I have the micro musher here and some the massage table and some lights that are drawing some energy, but I never exceed a thousand watts. On this floor, I currently only have the textile factory at 240 watts, which is not a significant drain. On the main floor, where we started initially, we have our supercomputer, research station, LGD oxidizer, and what have you. This grid is also running this pump that's located down here at the bottom. Because of the way I have it separated, I can very easily control how much power is going to be consumed on any given floors just by building the machines in different places. As my colony grows, I may have to try to manage the power though across a much larger area, in which case I might have to move some of this power that I'm generating to a completely different area of the colony. You can either look at that by building a whole new power sub uh, substation somewhere else where you're generating electricity, or you can also just make uh, look at making some sort of a channel that lets you pass your heavy watt wire from one side of the colony to the other with, without having a negative decor impact. Now in this case you can see that I, I haven't really built anything in this lower portion of the colony because I, I haven't finished working in here. However, this is one way that you can move the power about. When you get the power to the other side of your colony you then simply set up another transformer and you have another, another set grid on that side. So maybe again you're going to go vertically with your uh, with your heavy watt wire through a channel in order to manage the decor so that you're not getting a negative decor in, in that area of the colony and then you're just branching off the power at the different areas that you're going to need it. 
This is just one way that you could go about controlling your power. I'm sure that people have many different ways of setting up their power grid. However, this is a way that I, that seems to work pretty well for me. In this colony, I took a more that I showed earlier. I took a more vertical approach where I ran the the heavy watt wire across the top portion of the colony, and then I extended individual wires down. However, this is a little bit more difficult to manage because you tend to spider web your your electrical wiring out more. I think I'm ultimately going to be converting my colonies over to a scenario where I'm controlling the power supply on each individual floor, and that will make it the, the easiest to kind of subdivide each of your individual little circuits and manage them to the best of your ability. This is only, again, only one way to set up your power distribution. I hope it's something that you find useful and that it helps you manage the power in your colony. The important thing really to remember is that these big wires can't go through the wall, so you want to keep them in a place hidden away somewhere where you're not having that negative decor impact. Run your smaller wires through the walls and the floors in order to negative in order to avoid the negative decor, but don't exceed a thousand watts on any one of those given wires or it will break. Hope you found this tutorial useful. I'm as always Cryptic Fox. I'll see all of you next time.